Welcome to our Bible study with Bishop Roddy Taylor of Warden Road, Center of Worship. This evening's message is on love one another. We thank you for joining us. Please note that all Bible verses can be found in the description below. And now, the Bishop. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's another privilege that we can come together to study God's Word. And as we've just been praying, and we expect answers to prayer we also think and know not really think but know that god's word is always sure it's always clear it's always precise and there is no failure when it comes to god's word so tonight we want to get right into our subject and we want to talk tonight on the topic of how to love one another love one another and so the question is what is love what is love Lo this question has been asked for centuries people have written volumes of books uh, trying to explain what love is if you google the question what is love You'll get thousands of different answers. One answer I found was this. And I found that from in the, the world's best definition of love, um, the selfcreation.com. And it says, love is an intangible connection between two people that feels exceptionally good. What an explanation. An intangible connection between two people that feels exceptionally good in psychology today it says love is a force of nature however much we want to we may want to we we, we cannot command we cannot demand or we cannot take away love any more than we can command the moon and the stars and the wind and the rain to come and go according to our whims now this is very interesting this is a very interesting definition in light of the fact that that god does exactly what this article in psychology to this is cannot be done and that is to command love we can see why there is so much confusion about love because love is defined so differently by so many different authorities but just perhaps just maybe we should consider the authority who created us and defined love himself and that authority is God. So we are going to spend some time tonight looking at the subject of love as revealed to us by the Apostle John. And we will be studying uh, 1 John chapter 4 verse 7, 8, and 9. First John chapter 4, verse 7, 8, and 9. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. And it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was mani made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And so the Apostle John begins with the command of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us love one another. Let us love one another. Brethren, we, we are commanded to love. You see, love is not an option. Love is not something we can decide if we will do it or if we will not do it. We are commanded to love one another. And the reason we must love one another is because love is from God. Real love has its source from God. And we only understand love because of God. We can only know true love by understanding God because He is the source of love. Amen? And, and this is the reason why so many people are, are trying to define love in so many ways. 
They are not looking to the source of love. And so they think that they can explain love because they, they, they because love uh, is from God. And so we must look to God to know what this means for us. Love, love is not natural or innate. Love comes from God. God shows us what love is and what love looks like. Amen? More than that. More than that. We must love one another because love shows that we have been born of God and that we know God. Amen? Loving others is a fruit of knowing God and experiencing the new birth. And I want us to notice today that there is nothing said by the Apostle John about the other person being deserving of our love or being lovable. It has nothing to do with the other person when it comes to love. The reason for this is because what the other person does is not part of this equation. If you know God, then you love others. The equation is, is, is as simple as this. Genuine love cannot be exhibited in any community unless it reflects God's love. We're talking about genuine love. Now, I want us to hear how shocking these words are that God thought, taught us through his apostle John. Listen, in verse 8 he says, Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Can I repeat that? Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. If you don't know God, it means you don't know love. If you know God, it means that you will know love because God is love. Those whose lives are not characterized by love for others are not Christians. No matter what we may claim, if you do not love, then you do not know God. Amen? It's as simple as that, you know. If you do not love, then you do not know God and you have not been changed by God. We, we, we probably may argue with this, but, but, but this is what God says. This is what God's word says. If you do not love others, then you do not know God because God is love. Amen? Love is who God is. Let me say that again. Love is who God is. Just like God is light and that God is life, God is love. So therefore, God defines love. Love does not define God. God defines love. And we cannot impose our human view of love on God. We cannot do that. We, we cannot tell God what love is among humans or, or, or what love is uh, toward him. The text does not say to us that love is God, you know. What the text says to us is God is love. Amen. God defines love. God is, is the, 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 the ultimate source of love. If we are to understand love, we, we, we are to look to God. We must look to God in order to understand. When, when, when someone says that they love another person, and yet that relationship is a, is a sinful relationship, a relationship that is condemned by God, then it is not love because God is love. You cannot be living in a sinful relationship and say, I love you and we love each other and we're living in that relationship because of love. That's a relationship that God has condemned and therefore that is not love. That is not love. Sin, and I want you to hear me carefully tonight, sin is, is, is selfish. Sin is self-focused. Sin is self-absorbed. Sin is the opposite of love. 
love and sin cannot go together because God is love. If we truly love the other person, as we say, then we will not compel that person to be in or to remain in a sinful relationship or a sinful situation with us. Instead, the problem is you love yourself and you want to call the sin love. But it is not love because God is love and sin is not love. Sin is a selfish thing. Sin is all about self. But God's love is about other people. It's about loving other people. This And this shows how much we are the problem, you know. When, when it comes to loving others, we are the problem. We are far too occupied with loving ourselves. We, we, we are far too self-focused uh, to love others the way God calls us to love others. And our deepest problem, my friend, is us. Not outside of us, but us. Now, yeah, here's an illustration to prove the problem. How much of our anger is because others were in our way? How much of our anger comes from people not doing what we want them to do? How much of our anger stems from the expectations of what we think people should do you see we are the problem when it comes to love not other people and, and, and i want you to understand me we have to love people in spite of god loved us in spite of our sins and we will come to that in a while and god wants us to love people in spite of the the the, the, the focus on love is not me or you but the focus on love is other people we must love people sometimes they seem unlovable sometimes they may do things that 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 may hurt us and we think that we cannot love them but love has nothing to do with me love is not a feeling that burns from deep within but love is God and God is love and if we know God then we will love amen amen consider in your marriage how often your anger was because you were thinking about yourself you were not loving your spouse but you are actually loving yourself. How many conflicts happen in churches? Because we are not thinking about others. We are thinking about ourselves. We are not loving others. Because we are thinking about ourselves. How many uh, strained relationships happen among our friends? Happen among our relatives or our parents or our children be, 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 because we are loving ourselves and not actually loving them we should consider the word of god that god gave to jonah in his anger god said to jonah do you do well to be angry do you do well to be angry and so james told us in james 1 and verse 20 Man's anger does not produce the righteousness of God. In other words, he says, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Our love for ourselves interferes with genuine love for others. Therefore, uh, a radical heart uh, needs to be transplanted so in other words we need to have a heart transplant uh, a renewed mind a transformation of our mind amen uh, if we are to love one another knowing God is the way that this radical change of our hearts occur, occurs 
And so this is what John says in verse 7. Whoever love has been born of God and knows God. So to have the capacity to love others, I must know God more. Amen. Amen. The word tells us that to have the capacity to love others, I must love myself more. That's what the world says. But this is exactly the opposite of what God says in his word. We cannot tell God what love is or, or, or how to love God because God is love. To, 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 to have the capacity to love others the way God tells us uh, to means I, I, I must know God intimately. That's what it means. I, I must know God intimately. And here's how I can know if I truly know God. How can I know if I truly know God? When I love others. When I love others. Now, how do we get there? How do we get there? How do we get to this transformation so that we will love others as God commanded us to love? How can we love others with the love that God has given us? Because God is love. Remember the Bible tells us that God has shed abroad his love in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. God didn't just leave us just like that and tell us to love if he didn't give us the love. He shared his love with us. He gave us his love so that we can love others. Amen. God love was revealed. First John 4 verse 9 it tells us in the, in, in, in the word. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. That's the new Revised Standard Version. God, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. This change happens when we focus on the love of God that was revealed among us. God is love explains the cross and the plan of redemption. If God is wrath, then things go completely differently for us. If uh, God is justice, then things go very badly for the world. If God uh, only operated on the basis of law and justice, then we would be convicted of sin and justly judged to eternity in hell. You see, the remedy is God's love. God's love is the remedy. It is one thing to talk about love, but another thing altogether to show love. God is love. And God showed us love. The Bible says God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. We are loved by God and will always be loved by God. How, how do we know? How do we know that? John says that we can look at the fact that God sent his son into this world. We see uh, Jesus uh, and the coming of Jesus is, is how we know that we are loved by God. Amen. God sent his only son. Now, sending your only son shows sacrifice and sacrifice shows love love is ultimately displayed in sacrifice love is ultimately displayed in the giving of oneself we can say that we love but love is shown through sacrifice god sent his only son shows genuine love towards us what did God's love accomplish? What did his love accomplish? In verse 9 says, So that we might live through him. So that we might live through him. His sacrifice is our victory. His loss is our gain. 
and, and, and we now have a new way of life through him. He gave us that life. We struggle to love because of who we are. But we are to look to Jesus to change who we are so that we genuinely love one another. We love others, my friends, because we remember the love God has shown for us. When we begin to be angry, we must remember ourselves. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And let me tell you this tonight. We can be angry and sin not. But sometimes our anger, and we may say, well, the other person raised my pressure. They get me vexed. If you love, if you love, maybe you're, you might be angry for a moment. But you will not stay angry because you love. Come on now, get that point. How could I be angry with you and not be speaking to you for weeks and months and years and every time I see you I, I don't want to have nothing to do with you because you this and you that and you did this to me and you did that to me listen God wants us to love people if we cannot love people then we don't know God that's what the word says that's not what I say that's what the word says Leave up to our human understanding. We wouldn't love people because we will find people don't, they don't deserve our love. But we must love because God says we ought to love. And if we know God, we will love. The Bible tells us a new commandment I give to you. That you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. What am I saying tonight? We need to love others because God has loved us and we know God. We need to love others because God has loved us and we know God. What about you tonight? Do you love the way God expects you to love? Or do you love occasionally? Or is your love a selfish kind of love? A love of what you can get out of loving somebody? Then that is not love. That is not love. My friends tonight... You will hear people tell me, tell, tell you, if, if you love me, you will do this. And uh, you know how we say, the Bible says, Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. Jesus wants us to have genuine love. That we'll do right by others. We will love people in spite of. Amen. God richly bless you tonight. And I trust that this short Bible study on love, and we haven't begun to explore love or the love of God. But we need, brethren, to understand that we must love others. When we love, we would give. Love is sacrifice. So my prayer tonight is that we all will love the way God wants us to love. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And that was Love One Another with Bishop Roddy Taylor of Warden Road, Center of Worship. We thank you for joining us. Please note that all Bible verses can be found in the description below. And as always, be blessed. Stay safe.